What is happening, ladies and gentlemen of League Zero, and welcome to the postseason press conference for Wisdom Academy. Uh, I have a few of the team here. Uh, unfortunately, they have uh, at least half of them have the same name for the most part. This is the actual gag. That's Wizard, aka Sergeant Pepper. That's Matt. Uh, that's Jeff. And then everyone else has actual normal names. Uh, so, yeah. Fortunately, we do not have any pre-established questions. Uh, have had very few of those. I think a lot of people expected to be able to be here live when I made that announcement. But either way, I come prepared with uh, more personalized questions for each team, as well as some generalistic questions. So I guess we'll start off with uh, a somewhat chronological order. So this one's going to be mostly for uh, Jeff and anyone else who's with the team uh, around the time of the draft. So uh, each season, Wisdom seems to have uh, slightly different goals, right, compared from like season two to season three. Um, what what was the plan coming into the draft this time around? I mean, we had Spongy, who uh, I thought at the time, and I still think, was the best hit scan in the league. Um, we had the uh, we had good eyes on who we wanted, and having the fourth and fifth pick was a uh, very very nice. Uh, able to get Gag and Pepper, who both were very vital to us, and um, I think being able to have like. Honestly, our draft strategy revolved around who we got in the first round with those first two picks. Build the core from those three, and then um, we just kind of kept fi finding value later on in the draft, you know? Um, I think, I'm not sure, I think Zorth may have joined a bit after draft prep, so I, I might be the only person in this lobby who was around at that time. So yeah, it was just um, very lucky draft and having that four and five in a four person league makes it very easy to get a roster. And, um, Spongy, you gotta click accept in the top right corner if you wanna get in. I can, there you go, you got it. Um, uh, was... I can also touch on draft strategies, and I also think Zorth, uh, he was with us for a bit during that time. Okay, I wasn't sure. He, it was, he joined a little later in the draft things with, uh, Asdo, um, but, uh, they play, we, I think Jeff explained it well, kind of. All right. I believe, uh, if I recall your draft order correctly, you guys picked up Titanic rather early as well. Uh, uh, was he early or late? I think he was around, like, seventh round. I was going to say he's, like, midway through. Uh, either yeah. way, obviously, ha him having been a uh, flex DPS for uh, Wisdom Seasons 2 and 3, what, uh, what made you guys decide to put him on flex for? Is that something that like, he wanted to do, or is it just kind of like something that slotted in better? Oh, no, no. Fine. Th straight up only wanted to play flex support this season um he went to pugs as a flex support like the only reason he ever played flex dps for us was the one week where we had a uh, we had some rostering issues uh with spongy out so he did that in an emergency but never once was it in our plans to play him as a flex dps he wanted to be a flex support and you know we we had a a place where we thought we could take him, and he was available for us late, so it was it was just a good fit for us. Kind of ironic that uh, both starting DPS from Season 2 Wisdom ended up swapping over to uh, Flex Support at one time, because last season, Sui had also uh, gone over to Flex Support for... Oh god, which team? I think it was Guangzhou? Vancouver, I think. That's... What? Was it, wasn't it in oh. a different league? Oh, you... Wasn't that in Flux? Is he Sui also came to... Oh, season yeah. three. Okay. Zui was basically AFK League yeah. Zero through oh, yeah. season three. I think yeah. he was drafted to MI6, and then we ended up trading him. But I think he maybe played like two maps because he had a lot of stuff going on IRL. Yeah. Uh, also, next needs an invite. To He's already invited. He has to accept it. It's in the top right corner if you're looking for it next. Stage chats are right there. We once you, once you know how it works, it works pretty well. Um, right, anyways, next question, I believe, for the most part, you guys stuck with a good core of, like, the people who you drafted, as opposed to, like, you had some late-season pickups here and there, right, but for the most part, it felt like you guys kind of st uh, stuck with who you drafted, so, um, I guess, to that extent, like, what uh, what kind of impact would you say the, the people you picked up later in the season had on the team, if any? I'll let 
players answer this one, I think, if they can. Um, but I, or never mind. I guess it's more of a me question. I just don't want to talk a lot. Zorth, do you want to answer this one? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, I can touch on it a little bit, but I feel like Spongy would probably be better for it since I was I was not as active at sort of like the tail end of the season. Fair. But I think a lot of it was more like they they were picked up because we thought they'd be good additions, and just also for some of like the later season games, just to like give some of our starters a break while also like building up new players, you know, for future teams or just you know to see if they were good. Right? Is that more or less? I feel like that. I feel like that probably sums up pretty well. Spongy, do you have anything to add? Uh, I'd also say, uh, especially like later scrims, uh, when we were having a lot of problems with scheduling for a while, uh, it was very helpful to have a lot of them with us because a lot of starters for a while couldn't make scrims. So, uh, in but there. yeah, I mean, it was just like having. I, I think our draft just set us up for where we didn't really need a lot of people bought in. We made sure a lot of the people were going to be committed throughout the season. So, um, yeah, it was it was honestly nice not having a stress out like mid-season pickups to like save our season. In particular, one of the later pickups or the mid-season signups that you guys actually utilized a decent now, of course, would be uh, next. So, um, uh, in general, from what I saw, whatever games I happened to watch, uh, where he came in, it seemed like he was kind of like the opener, uh, right? He'd play that like first control map, and then more often than not, I barely ever see him after that. Was he literally just meant for like that first control map, or was there any other strategies or specific maps that he was intended to play on, but he never got to uh, get around to? A lot of it was because on Li Zhang, we like to run two flex DPS because of the comps we had to uh we wanted to pull out so um next and pepper just fit in as a better dps line uh, not better but uh, more more practiced on the heroes consistently um so that's the reason you saw him a lot first map really um overall pepper just because he was with us the full season had more practice with comms stuff like that so that's normally why you would see him in throughout the rest of the maps um Uh, speaking of like comms and comps and stuff, uh, who would you say would be like the vocal leader or leaders of your team, right? Uh, oftentimes when you get to like the higher divisions, it's pretty standard of like main tank, main support, that's it. But especially when you get to the lower divisions, I've seen like DPS or uh, really anyone else besides the main to be the shot callers. Uh, I'd say it was mainly uh, Pepper and Gag and also Rock sometimes helped in comms a lot. Uh... A lot of times, like if if comms died, like Pepper would pick it up, or like and gag with like all tracking a lot of other stuff. It helped a lot during our season, so. True. All right, short and sweet, I guess. Uh, right. So you guys kind of developed a little bit of a in-game rivalry. I'm not going to touch on like all the, the out-of-game stuff, but an in-game rivalry with uh, Rio, which obviously went. Pretty back and forth over the course of the season. I think you were, what, 2-2 two and two? Uh, overall? So how did you guys approach uh, one of the tougher opponents the, the franchise has ever had to face? Uh, yeah, go ahead. You want it? Uh, yeah. Well, I think we just kind of, like, prepared how we normally do. I mean, maybe just, like, uh, like an extra bot review against, like, Rio. But uh, we kind of, like, faced every opponent the same. and Because we wouldn't, we wouldn't take anyone lightly, but we're not going to, like... You know, we didn't really take anyone lightly, so it's kind of like where you were always preparing for like every game to be like real. Actually, yeah, more or less. Yeah, I would agree. I feel like the wisdom way is to not play I, down to other yeah. other teams' levels, right? We play at our own level, and that's why, like, for the past few seasons of League Zero, we've been pretty dominant. I think. Yeah. Just as an org, right? Just because of like that, the mentality, right? And I think to a degree, there was always like a certain level I would expect from, or we would like me, or through would expect. And I think we, we made it clear that we didn't want to go into any games like thinking, oh, we're just going to like, oh, like, even though every time we played Geo Unfortunate Sons, like the game was always pretty much in our control for the most part. Like the fact that we were able to face them, both of them twice and be able to uh, control the game like we did. 
Um, we we just were really good about like turning up on game day and prepping. I think. So um, it, it wasn't so much like preparing for uh, with Rio. We just kind of we went through the same motions, um, you know, week after week, pretty much, just making sure we're ready for the next game. We did give you a few heart attacks, though, Jeff. Eh? We, we yeah, C nines exist, right? So they <laughs> mostly. <laughs> So I guess, uh, kind of playing off of that, uh, back and forth with Rio, what do you think the, the difference was between, like, the, the winner's finals match of the playoffs versus the grand finals, right? Obviously, uh, very, very close grand finals, but, uh, Rio did come out on top for the first time in, like, what, a month and a half at that point? So, like, what, what change do you think between, uh, the few weeks of games there? Uh, well, I want to touch on this first, kind of, because, so, uh, I don't think we really had the best warm-up scrim, because we scrimmed, uh, against, uh, another marsupial team called Quokka Queens, uh, who basically are a Masters team, like a 3.6 team, uh, who we thought we would, they would be on off rolls, but they were all on main rolls, so it kind of, like, destroyed our mentals before going into the game, which was kind of unlucky, but, which is nobody, nobody to blame. Um, yeah, and I, I think... Uh, with with certain people's schedules towards the end, uh, I think we weren't able to get like really the scrim time. Um, we necessarily would have would have been ideal. Um, I'll let the team speak more to that. But I think there were, I, I think us beating Rio relatively well in the winners finals uh, probably kind of gave them the motivation needed to just come back because. Uh, looking back on the winner's final and a lot of they made a lot of mistakes that we were able to punish then you go back two weeks later when they've had uh, these two weeks to basically solo prep on us because i i don't think they were worried about who they were playing against fortunate sons or geo honestly um and they just looked like a better team uh way better than they faced us two weeks ago um, more organized they weren't uh, out of position as much like um whether it was like apathy or not like uh in the end i think they they got in some really good practice and they were really driven to beat us like really really driven uh in particular i know rio had given a lot of credit to their uh, vast coaching staff obviously they had a uh, client bringing in quite a lot of his uh former teammates from like the contenders trials days all that stuff even bringing in infected i believe a little bit to coach uh, and wisdom in past seasons has very much taken advantage of like the the big uh, foundation of higher level coaching and uh, references, I guess, for inside of the marsupial org. Is, is that uh, still like just as true this season, or do you think you utilize those resources less this time around? I just don't. I I don't think we have the same kind of resources this year. Um... Uh, unless Spongy, you might be better at answer this one since you're sure. around both yeah. seasons. Well, the thing is, uh, so Wisdom never really had like that many coaches and many people think they do. Because so last season, uh, we had uh, Mimino for a while, and then it kind of went down when he went to DC, and then uh, Jeff came in at the end of the season. And this season, we kind of it's kind of like it's always like one or two coaches really that uh, take the wheel. Uh, but and then there's a couple like coaches that. Uh, obviously in the org that you can go to like one v one on ones, but there's not, uh, there's usually like one coach or like the manager will help you with like team plays and all that. I don't know if anybody else wants to touch on this too. Yeah, floor is open if anyone else has anything <laughs> they want to say. Gag, what do you think? <laughs> Real gag or fake gag? There's like a million of you. I wasn't very, listening very closely. What was the question? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think your resources uh, in terms of like coaching and everything the marsupial offered uh, stacked up this time around? Right. Um, well, so I think Spongy covered it pretty well where we had we did have, you know, kind of a rotation of coaches that came in and out. Um, but Jeff was really the most consistent uh, in that respect. Uh, True, you know, came in for grands and I think maybe one or two times before that. But I think... Jeff did a really good job for what, what he was given, and, uh, you know, it got us where we are, you know, Grand Finals, so. Alright. Um, 
That's the nicest thing you've ever said to me, Dag. Even though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways, uh, what would you say would be like your your guys like average scrims? Right. I like to ask every team this question because there's usually a wide variety of answers. Uh, three point two ish, give or take. You're asking like average what we scrimmed? No, just like. You know what went on, like how seriously did you take it? Any funny moments you want to share from it, etc. I'll let the players answer this one. Uh, well, scrims, uh, a lot of them. Uh, sometimes we would just make fun of each other, and like some you take seriously, some you don't. Um, but I'll let someone else explain since I've done a lot of talking. Uh, depending on my... whether or not we. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh. I mean, I was gonna say a little. It was just—it was my first time screaming ever, so um, it was like an adjustment for me, like getting used to everything. But um, I don't know. Everyone was cool. Like, we had a pretty good time. Sometimes heads would butt, whatever. We always got over it because, like, we're a solid team, and we just figured stuff out, moving together, and it was—it was good. Yeah. I think uh, if you're comparing our attitudes in scrim versus in game, the biggest difference, I mean, it depended on how many players we had in the given scrim. Uh, if we had a full roster, we'd normally take things pretty seriously. But if we were missing some players, uh, there would be Genji. <laughs> so. There would be Genji whether the coaches wanted it or not. The birth of the yes. Tremata barbecue. Oh. True. Shimada barbecue? I'm assuming Hanzo Genji is in the of family yeah, barbecue. It's probably ran against Fortunate Sons. I don't I can roll. It's a Rissa Hog Hanzo Genji. Oh, okay. Lucio Bap, right? Yep. Yeah, that's correct. Yep. 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 Lucio Bap. Yeah, <laughs> so, like the kill read in me. That composition keeps me up at night. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> Right, because if you want to join, you can just join yourself. You have perms. <laughs> but, um... Where was the next one? Okay, well, he's gone. <laughs> he, he left. Either way. Uh, what was the next question I had? I had these written down, but I lost my place. Um... Oh, right. So, uh, what, what uh, if anything, did you guys do for, like, team bonding? Uh, Monopoly. Monopoly <laughs> Plus. Do, do not speak of that, please. Do not, uh, do not break a Monopoly. <laughs> wasn't like there like a four hour? Like didn't we play like a two, three hour game of Monopoly? Like, yeah, uh, that's uh, probably. Not <laughs> that sounds. And also, we started a SMP. metagaming. A Minecraft SMP, too. Eh, yeah. yeah. But Monopoly that was, was more the of a big koala thing, thing though, eh? Well, no, uh, Rock started it for Wisdom. Uh, that was after season though, the Minecraft did, doesn't use Brasser. We also did a couple of uh, like internal oh. whatever scrims, right? Like on our bye weeks and stuff where we kind of just like vibed in scrim versus like scrimming scrim, right? So yeah. there was that as well. All right. Uh, let's see, I'm quickly running out of questions. So I think I'll give you one last one that'll probably drag out for a little bit because everyone can have their own answer uh what would be your favorite memory from this season watch go down the line so the the actual gag if you want to answer uh, come back to me i have a very bad memory it's fun okay. you can uh, you know uh pepper. pepper you got anything so in game not much. I think something that I found really funny, at least, uh, people rated us really poorly going into the season, right? And I found it really funny, all those salty analyst tears after, like, week two. That's something that stands out as memorable. Uh, In-game, I think the Shimada Family Barbecue has to be a highlight. Uh, I think that was also funny, and it was fun to play. Uh, just in general, I think the whole season was great, and we played so well, mostly because we just liked playing with each other and we worked really well together. All right, uh, Matt, do you have any? 
All right, well, my favorite part of the season, it definitely, like, it wasn't really related to Overwatch. It was just, like, having a good time with everyone, because obviously we played a lot of games outside of Overwatch, too. Like, there was Monopoly. We played Guarded Phone once or twice. We played Minecraft. We all just had, like, got along really well. It was a really good group of guys just to, like, play video games with, not just Overwatch. Like, it expanded outside of it, and I just had fun doing that. All right, uh, Skylar, got anything? Uh, yeah, I mean, I definitely agree with Matt. It was great getting to know uh, new people, especially uh, when it relates to, um, you know, a common game that we all love, uh, which is Overwatch. Um, as it pertains to actual gameplay, I would say uh, Winner's Finals was definitely a highlight for me. Uh, I definitely really enjoyed playing that game. and I felt like we were kind of firing on all uh, cylinders that game. And that was pretty uh, memorable for me. All right, uh, Zorthgon? Got anything? Yeah, I have, uh, <laughs> I have two memories that kind of come to mind for me. One uh, close to the, be to, to the beginning of the season. I forget if it, it might have been either Matt or Pepper that wanted a VOD review. And then a bunch of other people jumped in and it became like a last minute team VOD review or something. Oh, the five hour VOD review. Yeah, the five hour VOD review. <laughs> yeah, that was me. That was funny. And then everybody just hopped in. Yeah. And do a long day VOD review. Yeah, that was a, that was fun. And then the other time I think is, is when myself, Jeff, and Gag were playing GeoGuessr until like two in the morning after a game or a scrim. I forget which one it was. Oh my God. Yes. That was <laughs> great. Oh, fun fun fact for the people at home: Gag is a monster at GeoGuessr. I, I did win that one. Yes, I did. Thank you. I mean, like you did perfect score every time. Yeah, when it comes to GeoGuessr. Yeah, and, and half the locations were like Nev jumped uh, jumped in, and Jeff was like, "Oh yeah, I've been here before." So mm, I didn't have that uh, advantage even. All right, uh, Peabock, got anything? You there? Yeah, just uh, like week one, just get it starting out with our first win. Cause, like my first win playing League Zero, because last year I was on SBC, which it's not fun. So it's good to finally get a win and show how good we can actually be. All right. Um, next, have me. Uh, it'll probably be like my first game. I was at least uh, versus fortune it sounds i remember um it was gibraltar uh we just like full held and we were like having a really good time and comms and everything and at the attack i was like play genji and they're like you can play genji and then then i got to play genji and that was cool that was cool <laughs> uh spongy got it uh I would say my favorite moment of the season uh, was our first Monopoly game. And so our first trade that happened was me scanning Gag uh, for a couple of properties and like a couple hundred bucks because he forgot to and then he forgot to hand in money. It was a pretty good time. But I, I did realize and then I made you wait. Did you scan me twice? I can't remember. I definitely no, I, I, I scanned you twice. I scanned you twice. And then I, I gave it back because he yeah. would have let I would have gotten me. Yep. <laughs> but it was a fun time. Uh, I I held on to this. I still hold on to it this day. Okay. I'm, I'm never playing that game again. Uninstalling. <laughs> uh, get or, well, Jeff, do you have anything? I, yeah, I mean, I think my favorite in-game moment was probably, like, our week four game after the bye. Um, I was a little bit... Uh, because we just came off the Rio game, I think, right before. Was that week four? Was that no, week no, Rio game was week two. Was, was it, so it was week three then, right? We went up against Fortunate yeah. Sons. Okay, yep. well, it was whatever game was after the Rio game, and just like how well we just like rebounded after what was a really tough week, really tough loss, and like uh, just how good the team was in enabling and being able to just drop that last performance and then put in like a really, really good performance against the team that next week really speaks to like a lot of like how 
dedicated these guys were and like how able they were to uh just re readjust after a bad week and being able to like work on their stuff and then go in it was it was really nice to see like all around and just in general like the draft as well being able to uh get these the guys that i pretty much wanted for the most part and like i'm by that i mean like every single one of these people were on my draft board and i i didn't really get many people that um I, I wasn't really put into many bad choices. Um, so just being able to get the draft we wanted and then how well these guys all approach the season, like the whole season was, was really, really fun. Well that's, well, that's pretty much everything that I have for you guys. Uh, wait, oh, yeah, wait, what? You forgot about me? All oh, right, you skipped yours. Yes. Okay, yeah, yes. you got it. <laughs> I've, I've, I've come up with a very good one uh, in the time that I've had. Um, so I'm gonna set the scene. Uh, well, it, people who know me know that I don't usually tilt very much in games. Oh, I, 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 it's, it's, spongy, please. Spongy. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> this was, um, this might have been during uh, Winner's Finals or maybe a, the game before that in GGNA, where yeah. like Spongy and I were on Muscle Bound Gaming uh, in the novice, novice tier, I think it was called, or whatever it was. But it was the same night as the uh, Novice Draft for League Zero. And I... Like Spongy, I think was late because he was doing the draft, but he came, he came uh, in. I wasn't late. Thai, so Thai was supposed to be at the game, but he wasn't there because the game started early. Okay. Well, a anyways, uh, Spongy would not stop telling me about the draft <laughs> at the same time that I was trying to all track and plan for the fights and everything, and <laughs> it just it, it, it enraged me more than anything had ever like before. Uh, yeah. And but that's, your favorite <laughs> that's my favorite memory. Yes. I, I have to add, Rock was also asking me questions about it. And okay. to be fair, <laughs> it was kind of Thai's fault for not being at the game. Yes. Because I notified I was I notified two weeks ahead that I wouldn't be there that exact time and Thai didn't show up. Yeah. Thai's yeah. not <laughs> so let's just blame all our problems on Thai. Like, uh, yeah, yep. That's all his fault. <laughs> yep. But and yeah. then, and then was, the best part about it was I received a message from Gag, uh, like just like uh, at like twelve o'clock, apologizing, yeah. even though I didn't care because I thought it was pretty funny. So pissing off Gag, that's a good moment. That is a good moment. <laughs> All right, blame it on Thai and piss off Gag. Great way to <laughs> to end out the season, I guess. I've been keeping you here for twenty seven minutes, and I won't be wasting any more of your time. So. Uh, Thank you all for showing up to this. I uh, hope you enjoyed your time this season. And I'm watching this uh, VOD after the fact. I hope you enjoyed this press conference. Uh, this has been Wisdom. I forget which one is next. I think it's like Fortune of Sons or Goofy, or Goofy Goobers or something like that. But either way, that's all we've got for now. So until next time, don't die.